Sometimes social media can take you places you didn't know you needed to go. I found out about Lisette through an Instagram story. She was hosting a live acoustic concert on Miami Beach during music week. It sounded like it could be a nice change of pace after all the uns uns. And I was correct. I was treated to an acoustic oasis of songs in French, Spanish, covers by New Order, and it was a treat to say the least. When I think of Lisette, the first word that comes to mind is talented. Lisette is a Cuban-born singer, songwriter, multidimensional, and multi-talented musician whose talents have taken her from Miami to New York, Paris, Amsterdam, and toured all over the world. She has an incredible resume as a musician, touring the world, live performances to 1.5 million people, underground music shows, you name it, she's done it. But what I found most remarkable and most interesting was her story and how she came to the U.S. with her family through exile from Cuba. The story tugs at your heartstrings, to say the least, and it's a reminder of how our past and our struggles can fuel our art. For Lisette, she feels like she's just beginning to hit her stride as an artist, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for her. All links to her socials and music videos are in the description below. Please make sure you check them out and give her a follow. You will not be disappointed. So without further ado, let me introduce Lisa Delay. Hi. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the bomb. Your patience are the bomb. Thank you for inviting me into your home to do this. It's like you stranger coming in, you don't know who the hell I am. And you're letting me come in here. So I want to say thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, last weekend, just give some context. Last week, last week, last weekend, two weeks. It was a whirlwind of Miami Music Week. Organized chaos, the most fun chaos I've ever had in my life for multiple reasons. And I'm here for Miami Music Week. And I want to give a shout out to Super Progressive and Will, who's the reason I'm able to have the conversation with you and other artists. And we're here and I'm at the Sound Garden. Your husband, partner is performing, Rodriguez Jr. And I come to find out on his story that you're doing an acoustic session. Yeah. In the park on South Beach, vibes. Yeah. The most vibes. So I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about a couple of other things in regards to just like your influences and where you pull inspiration. And the reason I want to talk about this is because Miami is a cultural hub for so many different cultures, but specifically for music. And during Miami Music Week, there's a lot of electronic music just yeah. happening. And your acoustic session was a gem to stumble upon. Thank you. So thank you one for that. And I want to just ask, how did you come about planning the acoustic session during Miami Music Week? Where did you pull inspiration from? And I'm just going to pass it over to you because I want to hear all about it. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for bringing coffee. <laughs> and um, there, I did ask if you wanted a cup. Yeah, and he we said, shared it. No, we shared it. I know, but I offered to get both, and he said that you had to run. No, uh, we share the, the anxiety created by coffee. <laughs> so we may as well share the cup. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks. It's cool to have uh, somebody at home to chat with. It's always easier than having to drive across Miami anywhere. So my first feeling was Miami Music Week what if I could cr provide some kind of antidote to the uns, 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 you know, because I personally love, especially with Barcelona and all the, and the Ibiza and all these places that you go to perform at, and I do a lot of electronic music as well, and you always appreciate the next day having access to something, um, some frequencies that soothe your ears also, you know, that, that softer, that, uh, so I, I don't know. I had the idea, like, let's add a little acoustic chaos to what's already happening. A lot of people were afraid to drive to the show. You know, they were like, I can't, the traffic Miami music, and it was actually really fine and really easy to access the beach. And I was really impressed with how easy it was. It wasn't ultra, but it was, uh, it was really, really nice. 
personally, I would say it was better than Ultra because it yeah. didn't have any of the chaos associated with yeah, Ultra. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have any yeah. of the chaos. The, some of the beach uh, hotel um, parties that I went to were just so beautiful. You know, there was just a good vibe. You could, could spread your arms around, you know. You could, I was dancing a lot. And, uh, and on Sunday, it was, um, it was the opposite. It was picnic. It was, um, it was little shakers and acoustic guitar. And, yeah. It was so nice. It was like, bring your kids, bring the family, exactly. bring your significant other, and let's just hang out and enjoy some beautiful music. And I want to highlight the fact that you are a very accomplished artist. You've traveled the world. You've toured with DJs. In, earlier in your life, you have an incredible breadth of music that you put out. And I want to tell you personally that Two of my favorite songs of yours, they are Asphalt Flowers. Oh. Love it. Like rock, like some rock oh. and guitar, guitar vibes. That one's an interesting song because it, it's a, it was a personal challenge that I took to write a song with one chord. Wow. It's one chord. I don't know what that says about me as far as... Uh, no, it's <laughs> interesting because it's, uh, it was, I was like, you know, let's, a, a friend of mine who I collaborated with sent me a little bit of a loop of a little sample, mm. you know, and it was like a couple of bars long. And I just kept looping it and looping it and, and adding progressions while stay, staying within one chord. And I thought that was a really great challenge. And I'm really like pleased that you picked up on that one. I loved it. It yeah. just, what, whatever was coming through yeah, for me. Yeah, it was me, recorded live too. Really? Very, yeah, you can see there's a video on YouTube. Okay. You look up Asphalt Flowers. And I have some footage of the making of, and it was literally everybody playing in one room and that's the recording and i really wow. wanted to try that because we don't get to do that anymore you know we're so spoiled with um digital and and the technology to be able to overdo and redo and and i thought that's that's kind of the rock and roll side of me it's like can i pull this off in one day wow you know and just accept whatever happens and and put that down and that's what asphalt flowers is yeah beautiful cool beautifully <laughs> done the next song going home oh. brought i cried i will oh. i'm a very emotional person i'm very sensitive that's just who i am that's what i wanted you to do well, okay well you know what happened <laughs> i cried and it, it it brought some stuff up for me where the sample that you used i want to ask you about the sample that you used in there there's like a sample of like either you or someone talking in that's that's what I, I oh my heard. God. And <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. Don't cry. Well, you can cry. It's uh, anything. Else. I can't believe you brought you you listened. You picked up on that. So okay. I'll, I'll give you context. That whatever sample you use, I I mess around on the turntables. I'm not a musician, but I have a dream of bringing in samples of my niece. She's five. Exactly. And bringing that in and just like the tone of the child's voice, which is so special. And also, just like a bunch, of, a bunch of other music I've listened to in the past where people are sampling, whether it's Alan Watts or like old Pink Floyd samples, or just like these beautiful voices that are bringing in a certain message, that song really resonated and connected with me. And I want to hear more about it because when I either feel a song or when a song makes me cry, it's good. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Wow. It's amazing. So I want to I wanna give you the floor to say a little bit more about that song because it was super impactful. So going home, wow, that, that sample that you picked up on is... Okay, so I was born in Cuba. Yes. And we left Cuba uh, through political exile through Costa Rica, but we left, we just... My, my father sent my, my mother and my brother and I to Costa Rica, and he said, you guys don't come back, just stay there. You know, pretend you're visiting. So we did. We waited for him like a year and a half to come join us in Costa Rica. And then we came to America about a year later. So in America, somebody gave me a little cassette recorder. Mind you, I was probably five years old. But I was interviewing everybody. And when, my, when we arrived and I had this little cassette, I remember being in this big new house. And I was just going around interviewing and I have this cassette where my, I asked my father, are you happy to be here? And he says, yes. And my father's like, do you want to go back to Cuba? And I say, ha ha ha, no, no way. And, and then my brother's talking about something and he wants to go fast. He wants to run fast. And all these, all this background, all this soundscape, which is the sound of exile, 
And it's kind of like the reverse of going home. You know, it's leaving home, but it's going home to a new home. And that recording, I mean, the fact that that cassette survived. All right, so now I'm cracked. Oh. So that means that, that means that that cassette was just like, it was the only photograph I had of our exile. And the only moment I had to, I hang on to it. I mean, I lived in so many places and that cassette traveled with me. So I finally digitalized it and put it in that recording, which is a song I wrote about the first time I went back to Cuba after 30 years. Wow. So I, I, it was a perfect like circle, you know, the, the leaving and the going back and the, um, the investigation of what it feels like to go back to a place that's no longer home, but yet it's supposed to be. Uh, it's a long therapy session, this one. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> you totally tapped into it. You got good antenna so, for the emotional stuff. <laughs> I, it, it just hit me really. It was so emotional and it hit me. And I, I went through a breakup with my girlfriend probably six, seven months ago. Um, and it just, it brought up that because she had such a bonding relationship with my niece and to not have them, to not have those voices together. Oh, shit. To, because I can hear my niece say her name and even still she says her name and that voice of you yeah. reminded me of my niece, just like the innocence of the yeah. child and the longing for something that they're missing. So I want to say thank you so much and honor you for sharing and being vulnerable and sharing that with me and sharing that through your music. <laughs> thank you so much. It's for damn sure a touch to me. And I'm sure if, if for other people listening, go please SoundCloud, Spotify, where can they find it? I mean, yeah, this they is can an find amazing it track. SoundCloud, Spotify, everything. And the video I made is, um, it's really pretty because I, there were, I went, I, half of the footage is my personal footage from my return to Cuba. Mm. Um, so a lot of the family that didn't recognize me that were taken by surprise seeing me, but the other half of the footage is in pink lakes in Mexico. So there are these fantastic pink uh, cenotes mm. and the water is, ultra pink because of the micro bacteria mm -hmm. that floats in the water, We're which is what the flamingos eat and why that's why they're pink. Okay. It's near, um, Merida. It's, um, it's in the, um, it's in the Caribbean. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. It's in the Caribbean side. And uh, so I'm floating in these pink lakes and then, you know, it's just a really beautiful video all done with my iPhone. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Homemade productions all the way. Wow. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. And I love it. I just really love it. You get different content when you make it yourself. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, thank you so much for You're sharing welcome. that. Um, I want to, I want to pivot and, and transition to a little bit more about you've lived in Miami. You, you, you've lived in multiple places throughout the world. I was reading a little bit. You said Costa Rica. You said, you've been in Paris. Mm -hmm. You've been, you've traveled all over. I want to ask you as an artist, what does Miami mean to you? Well, freshness. Absolute like, like re, recreation, you know, creation, recreation, meaning you're like bleached out by the sun and you can, you can start again in something that's like clean and pure and, and, and intense because Miami's intense. And you kind of also isolate at home in Miami because it's so hot. So there's this kind of intensity of being in your studio at home and, uh, it's less distractions. There aren't a hundred museums to go to. There are three or four and I do go to them all, but I, I like that it's a smaller scale at the moment. Mm. Um, and yeah, the water and the, um, the blossoming. I mean, I go and experience things in Miami that I, I never thought I would, you know, during, um, Art Basel, there are lots of off Basel things that are really fantastic happening in little hotels, like just happening all over the place. And Miami's just come back to life. I left Miami almost 15 years ago. I can't recognize most neighborhoods I, I, I left behind, you know? So yeah, it's restart. It's restart in, under the sun. I think that's a beautiful analogy in bringing in all of the elements that are so true to Miami and South Florida, but mainly Miami. And to your point, these big cultural events, Art Basel, Miami Music Week, they 
attract multiple types of crowds, but yeah. I think for, and you don't have to be a connoisseur to come to these events, right? There's something for everybody. But I think for the people that live in Miami or want to visit Miami, to your point, there are these pockets mm -hmm. that you can go to, like your oasis of acoustic vibes yeah. at South Beach. Yeah. And I think those are really special. And I think that's what makes Miami, Miami. Because a lot of times we think billboards, like stars, and like, not stars in the sense of like LA stars, but like high fashion, like all that. But it's got this hidden gem vibe to it. Yeah, I see, I, see I, don't, I don't see that side anymore. I don't know if it's because I'm not looking at that mm. side. I'm sure, I'm, obviously it's there. But I see more of the um, the bespoke, the homemade, uh, the, the trying to build things in different spaces, in different locations, and in, 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 a, in the garden, there's a, there's a sound uh, bath happening in the botanical garden. I mean, there's so many beautiful little things that you can escape to. Um, you have to constantly look and you have to, you know, talk to people, everyone you meet. Like I ask people where, what they love and everybody's got a different thing. There's this karaoke at the Haitian bar. There's this, there's that. And there's so much authenticity, which is funny for a city that is known for its, uh, what material, materialism, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't see that at all, perhaps because I'm Cuban. So I have access to the Latinos and, mm -hmm. you know, there's no bullshit there. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and, and there's another world there. The Calle Ocho is amazing. Uh, cultural nights in Calle Ocho are so cool. I didn't know. It's just blossomed. It's just blossomed and, and it still needs more. So it's so exciting to come here when you have something to offer and when you have your hands like bountiful with, uh, with things to share. You know, it's not, I'm not the same person I was when I left. And it's not the same city. So it's like a new encounter. That's a beautiful explanation. Yeah. And I, I couldn't put it better myself. I want to ask about your influences in your music. And this is the final question. I'm always so interested at as where artists pull inspiration from, whether it's art, not just music, whether it's other artists, whether it's different types of music, because the breadth of your music, you touch a lot of electronic music, but you also touch a lot of guitar. And there were even some songs I listened to that transcend, and I, and I don't use that, that word lightly, transcend genres. For somebody that has so much breath in that space, where do you pull inspiration for your music? Oh man, I, I, back in the days of CDs. Yes, I'm, I'm a CD fan. Yeah, I have CDs. back in the days of CDs, there was a, what was it, CD uh, on, on, by Sunset on US One, CD Exchange. Okay. The CD Exchange. And I would go there with any CD I had, the Cranberries in the 90s. And the guy working there had this amazing thing where he would just exchange something for you with something you didn't know. And you would tell him, yeah, I like, I like cranberries, but I want something a little darker. And then you'd walk out with cocktail twins and then you'd come back and exchange the CD and, and, and say, I, I like some of these uh, instruments, exotic instruments. And then you'd walk out with Nusra Fateh Ali Khan, you know, and then, and it was just fantastic to, um, to take one CD and listen to it. Also, you have one item in your hand, you have to listen to it. And I think I got into so much music because of the insular nature of living in Miami. You're in a car, you're in a, you're in a kind of, sh you know, shuttle of a private shuttle of listening, which is fantastic because I had to drive so much every day and every day I would choose my CDs and it's like, oh, I'm going to listen to like Indian music and this, and then I would go very deep into it. So my influences are, are everything. As I mentioned, I loved the dark, uh, gothic new wave stuff. I was really into that, which was funny because when I joined Nouvelle Vague, who covers like Joy Division and Depeche mm -hmm. Mode. I already knew all the songs. I'm like, don't need to rehearse. Good to go. <laughs> you know? Just add a little bossa nova to it. Yeah. Okay, we're good. But I also, I also grew up uh, singing classical. So I really love classical music. I love the voice. So I love vocalists who can sing. I love Tracy Thorne. Um, I love Joni Mitchell. I love people who have the whole spectrum of harmonics and the voice 
and that's um that's harder to find. Uh, Rosine Murphy is fantastic. She does that in electronic music. Um, it's harder to find a balance of experimental and vocal beauty, you know. And I I always try to whatever I need to create that I try to create that. And I'm not even I don't feel like I'm even starting. I feel like I'm just beginning to mature into what I want to do, which is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a lot of work ahead of me. <laughs> Problems of success, though. But yeah, you create what you want to hear out there. You create, you find the little niche that's missing, mm. which you've created, and then you fill it, you know? And that's, it's almost like a little ant that's taking something and putting it here, and it's constantly, constantly putting things together. Thinking, uh, you know, the mountains of projects that I have ahead of me, that's what keeps me alive and wakes me up in the morning. Beautiful. And I will say from, because I'm new to the electronic music scene, like I used to listen, but now like I've listened for a long time, but now I'm like getting interested and like researching. So I'm new in that regard. So a lot of these names, I'll admit, I don't know a ton of them, but that's good because now I can go yeah. and, and, and dig and learn. But from a top level perspective of all the different artists that you mentioned or all the different genres that you mentioned, I will say from listening to your stuff briefly, I can see all you trying to pull in all of these different influences. Yeah. And I, I really respect that of, of your work and of your music. Yeah, I don't think we can edit our a voice as much as you can edit uh, other things. Mm. Because a, a voice like picks up all the information, filters, mixes it with all the emotional content that's in the head. Then it goes through your body, has to go through the heart, like move out the mouth. This whole thing, the voices, you can't hide. You, that's the beauty of it. You can't hide. Well, many people do, but uh, you can hear it. Mm. And it's easy to create a genre or fix yourself on a genre when you're playing another instrument but maybe with a vocalist it's a little harder to hide and i like that yeah it's got soul yeah it's it's got its identity yeah. undeniably mm, really well put really well put thank you so much for your time yeah, thank I you i really appreciate it you're awesome thank, thank you. you for being so vulnerable and and taking the time out of your day to do this i know we had some hiccups in the beginning no. sweating outside we moved in and out <laughs> but i appreciate i really appreciate your time and i really appreciate your perspective on what miami is and is looking forward to yeah. in the future yeah i'm gonna be doing a lot more stuff in miami um, so yeah where can people find you what do you have coming up that you want to well, tell people i'm working about? on bookings at the moment so cool. we'll, we'll see but um i've got my instagram you can always go on my instagram and be in touch and i post everything there and I've got releases coming up with another one coming up with Rodriguez Jr. Um, in May called Visions. We just released a track called Amplify. I saw. Which is really, really um, a powerful one. And um, there's other projects, Project from New York. I'm going to be putting that out uh, after the summer. There's so much stuff coming up. So amazing lots to get excited about congratulations on amplify that's Thank you. huge I, john digweed gave you all a shout out yes he did transition yes he did so he awesome. gave olivia double double tracks i saw that yesterday <laughs> yeah. so it's big it's big it's huge and that song is really really important to me personally because it's it's exactly the message that i'm trying to give with music you know what 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 gets you high especially when I don't get high anymore, mm. what's going to get me high? <laughs> what's going to get the frequency, the goosebumps yep. in, up there, you know? And it is definitely electronic music because electronic music just takes me there. It's like an elevator ride, you know, acoustic. I kind of have to take the stairs sometimes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good analogy. But yeah, with, with the electronic and with Amplify, it's just like just feeling of Amplify me, you know, take me. It sends you. I listened to it yeah. a couple of times already, and it really puts you in that place. So I can appreciate that. All right, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Bye.